Maybe you've heard of a little video game company called Nintendo. They've got a few things going for them. Games so precisely and intricately designed that they hammer the pleasure center of the brain non-stop. Incredible art direction that is frequently jaw-dropping. Characters that range from badass to squeal-inducingly cute. Yoshi games are the cutest games, hands down. Cuter than Kirby, cuter than Captain Toad, cuter than everything. But better than the cuteness is that there's always a level of depth once you get going. And I'll show you how Nintendo's latest fits in with the rest of their excellently crafted games when I complete Yoshi's Crafted World. Here comes a new challenger! Yeah! Danger! Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Yoshi games are great and scratch a very particular itch in my gaming life. Nintendo has done something special with Yoshi's Crafted World, revived a real sense of play within me. Also inspired me to bust out a bunch of construction paper and crayons and cardboard that I've been saving for just this day. So with that said, let's begin. Yoshi games are consistently delightful, and we all need a little delight now and then. Crafted World is so dang cute and so dang satisfying. The Yoshi franchise always feels like the series where Nintendo can express themselves most creatively, and I loved that Crafted World leaned super hard into this. There was a time when I was bad at Yoshi games. Yoshi's Island for the SNES is still a really difficult game, maybe due to harder controls or more arcade style gameplay. I've never even completed Yoshi's story for the N64 because of that terrifying Yoshi song in the beginning. Stop! But I always loved how each game had a distinct visual identity that was expressed in the gameplay too. These games look like crayon drawings and storybooks, whimsy like you wouldn't believe. And as one of the few people who did every single thing possible in Yoshi's Woolly World, I can say that these games are more than just their look. Yoshi is a crafted little dino, and fully completing his games is deceptively difficult. Woolly World ushered in a more modern take on Yoshi games, more focused on collectibles and costumes, while also looking like the fever dream of a Joann's employee. Look at how outrageously adorable Yarn Yoshi is! Look at it! Look at the amiibo costumes! Look at all the collectibles! Look at the levels! Everything is something cute to hug and squish and sc ah! Now I thought Woolly World was amazing, and Crafted World gave me a ton of similar vibes. The cuteness is there, and the depth of play is as well, but there's also a whole new level of accessibility which made this 2.5D puzzly platformer a joy to play and probably the most chill weekend I've spent completing a game in ages. Crafted World starts out simply. Kamek and Bowser Jr, aka Baby Bowser, are at it again, causing trouble by scattering the dream gems all over the place. Yoshi must cruise through gorgeous worlds that look like they were made by extremely precocious third graders. Collecting coins and smiling flowers, finding secrets and tossing eggs at any shy guy that'll look at him funny, all on his quest to find the gems. And it's so flippin' cute! Now, I've also been informed that Bowser Jr. and Baby Bowser are totally separate characters, which, like, I knew, but I didn't know. The only difference is a little drawing on a bandana. All right, let's see. According to the internet, it looks like Bowser Jr. is Baby Bowser's future child. Hold on, how old is Yoshi? Is the Yoshi in Super Mario World a descendant of the Yoshis in Crafted World? Anyways, aside from the time travel shenanigans, the plot of this game is pretty simple, but that's not why anyone plays these games. This game is flippin' adorable. I love Yoshi, and I'm looking forward to a streamlined, well-designed Nintendo experience. This is my form of self-care, relaxing on a couch and flutter jumping my way to glory, maybe with a buddy. Because another thing I love about this game, this can be played entirely with another person. Hey Ted, ready to play some co-op in Crafted World, my dude? Boy, am I. I got my costume all made. Dude, I love your little fishes. They're so well designed. I love that you added the lights on top of your school bus. You even have kelp. How did you even think about that? The ocean kelp. You're too good at this, this man. Let's go play. You're good. Look at the windows in the back of this bus. And Thanks, man. This gives me a lot of armor.
If Nintendo ever figures out a way to weaponize the cuteness of Yoshi's crafted world, we are all doomed. Seriously, every single thing on screen made me smile. From the very start, the details are so meticulous and specific that I knew I was in for a treat the whole way through. A lot of games use style in place of substance, but Crafted World ties them both together to make this the most accessible Switch game out there. The art direction in this game is absolutely top notch, and it had me wondering, how did they do that? Just about every two minutes. Every object on screen looks like something handmade. It's like Nintendo really wanted to reinforce the idea of playing a game. It feels like imagination is really being tapped into. Instead of a hyper-realistic digital world, it feels adorably low rent. Though it probably took just as much work to make this papercraft world come to life. The game is pretty easy for about 90% of it, but that works in its favor and helps put the spotlight back on the art style. Especially with a friend playing with me, I gotta sit back and smile at what was going on right in front of me. I can't say it enough. Every time someone in the office poked their head in to see what I was playing, they'd exclaim, Oh my god, that's so cute! The cuteness is literally disarming, and if we hadn't already domesticated Yoshis into wearing saddles, I'd be more than a little worried. Wait, what are you- That's not a saddle, that's clearly a shell! What are you talking about? Look, that's a- that's a- he's a- it's a shell! Come on, alright, give me one second, let me- Oh my god, everything I thought I knew about Yoshi is a freaking lie. Forget it. Nintendo's gonna take over the world with adorable Yoshis who are protected with shells, and in this case, cardboard as well. If you're wearing a costume in Crafted World, Yoshi becomes essentially invincible. Depending on how rare your costume is, it gives Yoshi an extra three, four, or even five hits, which are completely refilled at every checkpoint. Getting defeated by enemies in this game isn't really ever an issue, and these extra hit points make even the sloppiest of run-throughs of a level an absolute breeze. Now, the costumes are easy to come across, especially if you're like me and have a kajillion amiibos lying around. But even if you don't have any to scan on you, Yoshi can buy them in-game from gumball machines in every area. At first, I was worried that there would be a level of randomness to the costumes and that it'd be a pain to find, but nope. When you buy a costume, there are never any repeats. So it's super easy to know how many you're missing and what part of the map to buy them from. Nintendo took a ton of guesswork out, and as the completionist, I super, super appreciated it. It feels like everything was designed in such a way to reduce stress. I didn't love playing co-op in Woolly World, but for some reason in Crafted World, it just works. One player can ride on the other Yoshi's back and throw unlimited eggs, making boss fights a joke. You can super jump off another Yoshi's back, making some platforming areas much simpler. It's just another thing that adds to the accessibility, a gift for people who play video games with others who might not be as well versed in the medium, or, you know, Ted, who needs all the help he can get. There's even Mellow Mode, designed for youngins, where Yoshi can fly forever with its little wings by holding down jump. Mellow Mode does seem kind of overkill in a game this simple, but it's worth mentioning for parents trying to get their kids into gaming, or if you've got a younger sibling you want to teach to play. In this mode, even the movement speed is slowed down, making every level a cakewalk. Also, are cakewalks even a thing anymore? What the f is a cakewalk? I don't know, but now I want a cake. There are dozens of little touches throughout Crafted World that demonstrate how Nintendo is all about helping people who don't normally get into gaming. First, you lure them in with the adorableness, then you keep them with the smooth as butter, non frustrating experience. But there's more going on behind the scenes, and that's where Crafted World truly shines. At first, I thought that Yoshi's Crafted World wouldn't have the same depth as the previous titles. But after completing it, I can say there's a ton of stuff to do in this game. And while it might not be the most difficult thing I've ever done, it's outrageously satisfying to do so and still feels very deep. That part of my lizard brain that wants shiny things and check marks and completely filled out lists, Crafted World absolutely delivers on that. And even if this game is relatively simple, it's still incredibly satisfying. There's a lot of backtracking in this game. After completing a few levels, little cardboard robots will show up, politely demanding that Yoshi go back into previous levels and start looking for specific crafts, which Yoshi must pinpoint and then bop with an egg. Now, this isn't all that hard to do. 
Most of the requests are as simple as find a frog crown or find five butterflies. Each level becomes a mini scavenger hunt, and that's where the little touches in Crafted World get a chance to shine. This kind of stuff is where I really appreciated having a friend to play with. One Yoshi can ride on the other's back and be the sharp-eyed lookout while the other navigates through the level. It was really fun to gather up the collectibles this way, especially since I had to go through some of these levels three or four or even five times to collect everything. With a friend, the scavenger hunt becomes a game within a game, adding a mechanically easy but still fun premise. Finding a craft in a level is as simple as shooting an egg at any suspicious looking paper cup crab or kamek cutout. There's literal depth here as I had to look to the background and the foreground, and it's incredible seeing objects pop in and out of the focus depending on what Yoshi's aiming at. It's the first Yoshi game to take full advantage of the aiming reticle, and I hope to keep it for future games. Another great little touch is that once you find whatever craft you're looking for, the game prompts you to just exit the level. You don't have to go all the way back to the end, you can just hop in, find what whatever you need and bail out. I love this design choice and it makes it that much easier to see everything this game has to offer. There's another great touch in every level, the flip side. After going through a level once, Yoshi can go through the level a second time from the opposite side and from a different perspective. On the flip side, the player can search for missing poochie pups and additional crafts. This basically doubles the level count of the game, even if the options are more limited on these flip side runs. This gave me a chance to view each level in a totally different way and I appreciated seeing the behind the scenes work that went into the diorama like level design. The flip is where you can see tape, thumbtacks, and the cardboard boxes that make up the front side of the levels in their unvarnished glory. I feel like there's a little missed opportunity to take more advantage of the depth of the flip side dynamic. In the E3 2017 trailer, there's a moment where two players do a ground pound together to flip the entire level around 180 degrees, but that mechanic got changed somewhere along the line. This game could have been a lot more complex if players could switch views at any time, which, who knows, maybe would have increased the depth of the gameplay. This isn't really a complaint, just a thought I had as I was playing through it. For the most part, gathering collectibles is easy, but I want to stress that I never felt bored at any point. I was fully engaged the whole time, because the gameplay changes it up almost every single level. There are cool little one-off mechanics that are fun and interesting and provide a quiet satisfaction. Some of the most interesting levels are the auto-scrolling ones. I love the idea of these. Each one of these had their own set of rules, such as rolling through as a giant terrifying mecha Yoshi with boxing gloves that destroys everything that stands in its way. Another one had me running the hell away from a giant raging undead dino. Now these are great ideas for the most part, but since some of the levels scroll a little bit slowly, it made missing collectibles a pain, so I'd have to replay the level and wait until it scrolled where I needed to go. This is a minor complaint though, since the vast majority of the worlds in this game are just so inventive. There are a few that are direct callbacks to Woolly World, which, yeah, love it, and one level that takes a hard left into straight up Yoshi horror. I'm talking unstoppable axe murderer clown dolls who chased me down until I hit under a light bulb and then called their friends once the lights went out. I'd honestly love a more fleshed out version of this game since it's so different than anything Yoshi has dealt with before. The requirements for completing each level are the same all throughout the entire game. Even if a level has its own mechanics or rules, it's satisfying to see how the designers worked in the red coin challenges and hidden smiley flowers. It just feels good. Going through each exquisitely designed world, I was reminded of a great Shigeru Miyamoto interview, where he says that a game must give the player a sense of having accomplished something. Yoshi's Crafted World provided me that feeling again and again and again in little micro doses. This game really put me in a meditative, reflective kind of mood after a while. It's sort of like interacting with actual arts and crafts, where when you get into the flow of folding and cutting paper and pasting googly eyes on everything, nothing else matters for a while, and I could just smile and cruise on through. So there's a ton of little things to do in Yoshi's Crafted World providing me with a little ping of dopamine that I love so very much. But there isn't all that much to receive in the way of completion rewards. Whereas previous Yoshi titles tend to have a punishing endgame, Crafted World isn't that tough, which was honestly okay. I didn't devote a ton of time to talking about all the stuff there is to collect in Yoshi's Crafted World because real talk, aside from finding the crafts which required me to revisit levels multiple times, I was able to knock out almost every other collectible in a level on my very first try. Finding 100 or more coins, 
simple. Making it to the end of a level with full health? With costumes, I barely had to think about it. The red coins and hidden flowers occasionally threw me for a loop, but the game communicates pretty clearly about where you might have missed something. So it was never a pixel hunt. I'm okay with that. Maybe it's a little over communicated, but it's all in the name of accessibility, so I give it a pass. The one big difference between Yoshi's Crafted World and previous Yoshi games is that the hidden hill secret levels that are unlocked in the late game aren't really that hard at all. They're still super inventive and do a great job of bringing back previous mechanics that I had to master from earlier moments in the game, but the challenge level, even without any checkpoints, never rose to the level of the hardest stuff that Woolly World had to offer. There are a couple of post-game things to do, like a boss challenge mode and a robot to find that shows up in every level. Again, these aren't really much to wring your hands over, just another chance to enjoy the scenery at your own pace. And having an extra Yoshi around made this stuff a cinch. So what's the big prize? for finding every craft, getting a crayon flower for every level end screen, and beating both Baby Bowser and Kamek? Just a couple of snazzy extra costumes, a different screen for choosing your Yoshi color, and gorgeous little pinwheel flowers over every single level. Now, I'd be more disappointed by these minimal rewards if I had slaved over completing this game. But because it wasn't all that tough, I didn't mind it so much. When I completed Yoshi's Crafted World, there were 185 costumes unlocked, some which are extremely adorable, like this pirate ship, and some which are not, like this slimy looking ass thing. 49 levels explored, including all the boss levels, each one an absolutely stunning diorama that made me say some variation of, this is so freaking cute, at least once. 693 flowers found, which is a super frustrating number. Just round up to 700. Come on, man! 35 frustration-free hours played. And one completionist who thought he knew some stuff about Yoshi lore and got totally schooled by his co-workers and the internet. Yoshi's Crafted World is a beautiful game, and as someone who's been spending a lot of time with tough and scary games lately, it's a perfectly zen and mellow time. I did wish it demanded a little bit more of me at times, but completing it also didn't ruin me, for which I am very grateful for. It's joyful, fun, and great to play with a friend, little cousin, or even significant other. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Complete It. Complete It! That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. And hey, hit that subscribe button if you like what we do here. Also, we have merch now. If you want to go to thecompletionist.com slash merch or just thecompletionist.com, we got all kinds of old designs back at it again, the Krispy Kreme, just for you. I've been Gerard the Completionist, and we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye.